So there's a lot to zoning, and so as I know a little bit, Jacksonville has a lot of awesome tools, so you can know everything on a drop of a dime. So these are your best friends. Your best friends, the COJ property appraiser, basic search. There you can find your basic zoning under land. It will say zoning assessment, as you see on the screen. It will show you RLD 60. Whatever that zoning may be, it will tell it to you right there. Um, also, if you're curious of zoning and the zoning around you, something really cool you can do is you go to that JAC GIS uh, map again. You go to layers, land base, and then zoning, and this will pop up, what you see here on the screen. And that is actually just a quarter mile north of us, where we are right now. So you go a quarter mile north, that's what you're going to see if you go to this map. And it's cool because that's a really good mixture of RLD 60, RLD 90, RMDA, RMDB, there's a PUD, there's commercial. So it's cool to see all the different zonings and just how quick zoning can change, uh, especially in a city like Jacksonville. Uh, if you're still having questions on zoning, which I still do, I'm sure you still may. If you're wondering, what can I build here? What goes here? What can I do with this lot? What does this zoning mean? What goes into this lot as a whole? Jack's Muni Code. Jack's Muni Code will absolutely be your best friend. Essentially what this does is, it tells you exactly what you can and cannot do with the zoning of your lot. It can tell you your setbacks, it can tell you what you can build, what you can't build, and basically is everything you need to know and is crazy, crazy, crazy extensive. So any questions you have with a lot that you may be looking at purchasing or a lot you own, go to Jack's Muni Code. I would highly recommend after this, maybe tomorrow, just spend five minutes, scroll on it, and it'd be worthwhile. Promise you worth your time. If you ever have any questions about zoning, can't harp it enough, go to the Jack's Muni Code. I'm definitely on there every week, especially if I'm looking at you know, a zoning I haven't seen before, something a little funky. Um, it is absolutely awesome. And then next, you know, bought your lot, built your house on it, what can I sell it for, right? Or ideally, you're doing this probably before you uh, buy your lot. So with this, your sale value. And truthfully, before this, I had this as resale value, and Ben stopped me, he's like, hey, it's not reselling, it's brand new. I had to, I had to catch myself. So your sale value, um, ideally when you're looking at comps, you know, for a lot you're looking to buy, comps of the house, the new construction, once you build it, you know, have your plan in place, know what you can build, and say you're building a 1,200 square foot home, and you're looking for comparable houses um, at 1,200 square foot range. Ideally, you're going onto the MLS yourself, or asking your agent, uh, you can even go on Zillow, to go and look for new construction sales within the last six months. Um, also, would highly advise, look at actives. Look at actives, because say you're looking to build a house, and you, know, you plan on reselling it for 300,000. But you see what's active on market, and there's two new construction homes sitting active at 300. Probably isn't gonna be worth 300 if it's the same square footage you have. So always check active, see what's pending, see what's sold of new construction homes within the last uh, six months, ideally within what, whatever area you're looking in, right? So I'm running comps. I don't cross any major roadways, don't cross any highways try to stay in the exact neighborhood I'm in. Uh, with new construction, a little more grace to expand out a little bit more, uh, but don't go, don't go too crazy. If you're still having trouble finding solid comps, there's no real new construction in the area that's sold within the last six months. Um, look at builds 2019 to 2024 that have sold within the last six months. So we actually started doing that when we couldn't find any actual new builds, and it was really, really helpful because say you can't find something brand new, but you see a 2022 house, it's gonna be pretty similar, right? Might, might be a few thousand dollars difference, say five, 6,000. Obviously it depends on what you're selling the house for, but that's gonna be pretty, pretty comparable to your new construction. So I would recommend doing that. Um, also, six months, I'd say, if you wanna go back a little further, you can, but I try to stay within six months, especially with the market we're in now. Uh, things seem a little volatile and are changing, so try to stay as soon as possible to when you are buying that lot. Obviously with your build time, no one knows what's gonna happen, you know, I mean, nine months to build, uh, but that's part of real estate. Real estate's about taking a risk, and especially as an investor. So whenever you're looking at a lot, the JAX GIS has a layer that will show you where the wetlands are, or excuse me, the floodplain. Um, floodplains uh, are the blue and yellow on the map, and so this was a lot on Pullman that it got sent over, and it was um, about 
three feet of the base flood elevation on the lot was, was three feet from basically the, the dirt that was there. So the, the city uh, would like you to build two feet higher than the base um, flood elevation. So your house is now you know, five feet up in the air, additional cost and things like that. Uh, if the lot is big enough, you can build it up and then build the house on that, properly compacted and all those types of things. Um, but most often you're looking at a stem wall um, and stem walls get expensive if you're just running your numbers based on regular mono slab. Um, so, you know, flood, flood zones can be tough to build in. And, uh, you know, often when looking at them, we're speculating on, you know, is this worth less since it's in a flood zone and they have to get flood insurance and things like that. The uh, Florida um, Department of Mar Environmental Protection has a map that can show you wetlands. It's probably one of the more accurate maps. Um, we don't have a ton of wetlands here in Duval, um, especially in neighborhoods that have been platted out, um, but there's a lot of wetlands in clay. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, so this lot on the, excuse me, the street on the right is peach, and the street on the left is forest, and that is Beach Boulevard on the bottom. So that whole back area is wetlands. And if someone's just looking at it, they say, man, there's 20 acres of undeveloped land in the heart of Jacksonville. Um, but in order to go in there and clear that, you would have to pay to purchase mitigation credits, and you would have to basically purchase with mitigation credits 20 acres for every one acre you clear. So it can get quite expensive. Um, and it often, you know, the numbers to go in, and even if you pay to get it mitigated, you um, go in, clear it, and you're gonna dig down, and you're gonna remove all that muck and everything, because you can't build a house on it, you have to bring in clean, fill dirt, and make sure everything's right. Um, so once again, if there was a, a open credits in that same watershed, it could work out, but um, wetlands, wetlands can be kind of tough when you're looking at a large piece of uh, land, and it doesn't have a large other area that you could protect and pay credits on.